hey, Scott, you had alluded to, I think, a little bit yesterday about, you know, Dobbs' defense is not necessarily being great yesterday. He only played 24 minutes. Was that a minutes restriction thing with the calf and the knee, or was that more of a production, you know, you thought Denny was doing a bit better, so you let him run more? No, I mean, it was a combination of a few things. You know, his minutes, um, trying to keep him in smaller spurts and not, maybe not as many. And then he, he bumped knees, so that's why I said he was struggling uh, last night. It wasn't, he wasn't struggling from his calf. He was struggling because he, he bumped knees last night. Uh, I don't know what part of the game it was, but his minutes were a little um, less than probably normal. Do you envision him playing tomorrow where it might be a questionable type situation? Um, he didn't participate in, in the practice today. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be uh, questionable, but uh, we'll know more tomorrow. Chase. Scott, just to clarify, did he not participate due to the calf or the knee? Um, I just think his body is um, it, it probably the calf definitely is part of it. Just, I mean, it's part of the rehab process. We have three games in four night, back to back coming up. Like I said, it's, it's, a, we know more tomorrow, but I'm assuming that uh, he will be able to play. Um, I don't think it's nothing uh, serious. Yesterday was more, it was more the knee, you know, he bumped knees, but that's nothing. That's just the, the pain and, the contact that it, that it had uh, when it happened, it just bothered him, limited him a little bit, but he should be able to go tomorrow. But like I said, it's still questionable. We'll know more tomorrow. And what stands out to you about uh, this Kings team as you, you look ahead to them? Well, they got great um, guard play. They got um, boxes of potential all-star down the road, uh, but their guard play, they're, and then Barnes is always a, a guy that can get hot and score, and they've got an athletic five. I mean, they can score. They can score the ball. They had a they had a, uh, they've had a, a tough trip, and they've had a, they had a tough loss last night. Uh, but they're they're super they're super athletic, and they, they definitely can. Uh, they play fast, and they can score the basketball. Fred. Hey Scott, um, what what is the trick to coaching up Denny on just working on his uh, lessening his fouls on the perimeter? Well, I think with all developing players, that you have to be uh, you got to keep working on on the on the little things to be consistent, and he just has to continue to to know the personnel and it's going to take him some time. Like I said, he's just, he's just a couple of months away from being uh, just out of the teenage years. Um, but he has to keep working. We had a nice little practice and he was, uh, got better today by competing. And we did some one-on-one -on -one stuff uh, that you have to guard. You know, we, we struggled last night guarding. Uh, we actually, we struggled the last four games since the break of guarding. Um, and that's, that's resulted in, you know, four losses. We got to get back to being on the guard and then he plays, plays a lot of minutes. He has to, he has to get better and he will, he cares. He, he works at it. Uh, and, he, and he's a developing player. We're all, we're going to, I'm very patient with him. Um, but the, the things that, the things that I like are with Danny, they're all correctable. You know, just the, and a lot of it's based on experience. Seeing the play develop in this league is so critical because it gives you that extra uh, second or split second that it takes to, to be able to internalize it and be able to react and get into our proper coverage. I thought a, a handful of times that they were playing so fast on some of their screens and their small screens, and they got a lot of good players. Milwaukee has a lot of experienced players that can just read and react. But Denny, I, lo I love Denny's effort. I love his care. And he's going to continue to improve like all 
those young players, you want them to be 25, 26, 27. But he's he's right on track to being a really good player in this league. I know I know it's far in advance, but when he is 25, 26, 27, what what do you see um, the strengths of his defense being? What particular aspects of defense do you think he could help on the most? I think he's going to be able to guard, you know, two threes and fours. I think he's going to be able to guard. He's strong. He has good length, and he has he cares. You know, that's all part of it. And when you play hard, you're going to make some mistakes. And, and he plays hard. He makes some mistakes, but when you have the experience and you continue to play hard, those mistakes are going to be less. And, you know, down the road, he's going to be a guy that can guard uh, two threes and fours and also a guy that can play those positions on offense. And, you know, when we're, he's going to be able to have a, have some mismatch opportunities where a bigger guy is going to guard him if he's playing the four or smaller guys guard him if he's playing the two or three and he's going to be able to post up and score around the paint. I think that's all you know, down the road. I mean, we're, we're working on the steps to get get him there. And it's going to take some time, but his future is going to be extremely bright because it's because I I'm, he has those two things that you you don't want to ever talk about um, as a coach. Uh, and if you do, you're in trouble. Guys that guys that play hard and guys that care. And he he has both of those uh, factors and. So that's results in a good player down the road. Hey, Scott. Scott. You're welcome. Um, Scott, I kind of have a, a quick one for you that's a little off topic, but I, I remember that you were at um, Patrick Ewing's first game when he first got hired and he, and he came and coached to Capital One Arena. I don't know if you heard he recently led Georgetown to the Big East tournament title. Uh, I don't know if you get any credit since you were at that first game for him, but i um, <laughs> wondering if you had heard about that and any thoughts you had for uh, for Pat there. Oh yeah, no, I, I texted him right after the game. I had a I had a funny text and he had a funnier response, but I cannot say it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, I'm happy for him, man. That guy, I'm telling you, I've been I've been with a lot of great players, and and he's one of the best teammates and toughest teammates and that guy's an MVP person. I love playing with him. I love his competitive drive. And it's unfortunate. Like I have a lot of respect for a lot of coaches and a lot of players in the league. And I think fans in general, and even media in general, they kind of downplay those great players and great coaches because they've never won a championship. But man, that guy is a champion. And I'm so happy for him and the program. Uh, it's fun to see. I was a little, I was a little worried going into the last game against uh, Creighton just because they've had a, they had a big win. I think the night before it was the uh, Seton Hall. Um, but yeah, but it was it was an awesome to see it. And I think they have a good chance. I think they're playing against Colorado. I think they have a good chance to to beat them. They play. They're they're obviously peaking at the right time, but well-deserved and I think their program is on the way to being back to where it was. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Christos. Hello, coach. Hello. After the two games against uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, what would you like to improve as a team about the game against Sacramento and how much needed is uh, the win on tomorrow's game? Yeah, you know what? We're, we, we've been, we haven't been the defensive uh, last three games, uh, defensively, not as good. We're obviously, I mean, we're playing, we played those, those two teams three times, or they're the, basically the one, two or top three teams in the, in the East, but no excuse. We just got to get better. Uh, we have to get better and we got to get better quickly, uh, on the defensive end. We were on the way to being, you know, doing that, but the, since all-star break hasn't been as good talked about it today. Uh, did some things today in, in practice. Some of the guys did not participate, just heavy minute guys, Russell, Brad, and, and Rui did some of the things today. But we got to get better on the defensive end. Um, and hopefully that, that, can, that can help us get back on, get, get back and get some wins on, on, under, our, under our belt. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we got a couple more. Penny. 
Hey, coach. Uh, we saw the team performing well uh, last night when you played some small ball without some pure center with uh, Bertans and Danny and Rui. Uh, is this something uh, the team might want to explore some more in the future? I mean, we did it out of necessity. We we're just trying to create uh, some energy and some quickness and some, some more speed on the floor just to be able to, to get back into the game. I thought it worked. I thought we had a couple of, I think, three chances to cut the lead from five to, you know, two or three. Uh, a, tough, a couple of, you know, things could have bounced our way. Who knows what would happen? But I thought that lineup was good. Don't know how much we're going to use it going forward, but it's there in our pocket if we need it. I mean, but you still need some size and, and some bigs. Uh, and it de de definitely, you know, we want to play, you know, Alex Mo or Rolo uh, will get those minutes. But we know Rui can play the we, we can play the five in in, in smaller uh, se uh, segments. But it's uh, I thought last night they actually played pretty good and kept get, got, got us back in the game. I would like to ask you uh, after the two games against the Milwaukee Bucks, how? What did you learn from that games, and how big is the difference between you as a team and the, the teams like Milwaukee Bucks? Um, I don't think there's difference. I think we both an NBA team. You know, they won two out of two games against us. Uh, I think we're both a good team, with a good coaching staff. But uh, I think we're we're equal. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our weapons, our, our good weapons. They have their weapons. So, I mean, we're both in the A-team, so not, not much of a difference. Chase. Denny, I, I know you guys have played a few games since the All-Star break, but what was the All-Star break like for you as you had some time to kind of reflect on the first half and, and you know, maybe uh, clear your head? I think uh, it was necessary for me, you know, um, this uh, COVID season, it's all um, going so fast, the schedule is so, so tough. So I think that break we had, uh, we needed to clear our minds, um, to be ready to everybody think about uh, what he can do uh, better and how he can help the team more um, and just come uh, prepared and ready to play. So I think it was necessary. Fred. Hey, Denny. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, what, what are you learning about how to defend on the perimeter without fouling? What specifically are, are you working on in that aspect? You know, I'm working on being smarter. I think also I got uh, more experience. Like, it's more I guard on the perimeter players, and I see uh, on, the t on the film later, where did I hit? Where did I hit them? How did I get a foul? What? How? How can I defend them without fouling? Um, so as more I do that, it's 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 gonna be easier for me, and I, and I feel it, I feel like it's been easier since since uh, every game I played. Um, I'm just gonna get better, you know. I'm just gonna be smarter, better, and more experienced. So hopefully, by the end of the uh, the season, I'm gonna have a a game without fouls. So. Do you do you find it like do do you find you have to watch more film than you normally would with just how little you guys get to practice? Can you repeat the question? You were like, you're oh yeah, sorry. Do, how do you compensate for the fact that you guys really don't get to practice that much? What what do you do in order to kind of help that improvement? You know, we watch a lot of film. Uh, we have very smart uh, system and coaches that can um, schedule workouts or things we need to do to get better or improve. Uh, uh, they see the schedule and they like they book like a workout or what they think is going to be good for us. Um, basically, it's hard. You know, the schedule is really tough. The games go by quick. You need to you need to finish the game and, and prepare it for the next one. Learn from your mistakes and just be ready to play play again the next day. So uh, I'm not gonna say it's easy. Thanks, Danny. You're welcome. Neil.
Hey, Denny, I'm curious, what has been the adjustment from playing in EuroLeague, playing Maccabi, where, you know, you might be able to get away with more physicality before they blow the whistle versus here where, you know, kind of the slightest infraction, ticky-tack foul, they are going to call that whistle. What's been the adjustment there? It's hard, man. I mean, I like being physical on defense. That was my uh, my kind of name. Um, I used to guard uh, on the post, on the perimeter. I used to be very physical. And since I got here, um, I'm getting a lot of calls because of that. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm less physical. I'm going to say I'm smarter with my physicality. So I know when to use my body. I know when to back up a little bit. I know who, who's the guy, who the guys they like, they're going to call more and call less. So I'm, I'm really careful now. I'm really think when I defend now. Uh, ra uh, rather than like just being physical, but um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Danny. Howard. Um, thanks. Hi, Denny. Um, I know that looking ahead to next week, you're going to be in um, Brooklyn and then also at the Garden. So, have you played at Madison Square Garden? And what are you looking forward to playing in the very famous Madison Square Garden? I actually watched. Uh, Actually, I think I watched uh, a game at Madison Square Garden when I was like eighth grade. Eighth grade, I was with Maccabi. We had a trip to to the United States when we were in New York, and we were at the Garden. But I was a fan in the Garden. I never played on the floor, so it's gonna be like a closed circle, you can say, right? Yeah, you can, like it's it's cool. I mean, it's exciting. Every new gym that I come, like I, I adore and and see. So it's it's nice. That's true, come true. Myers Leonard, uh, Mar Mashu, uh, offensive <laughs> about. Did you see this? Did your teammates talk to you about this? Um, I saw that. Yeah. What was what was your reaction, and did, did the team talk about it at all? Listen, um, I don't really want to get into uh, those kind of things, but um, I think Myers didn't have uh, those kind of intentions. I think uh, he did a mistake, and we know that. Um, we don't accept those words, but um, I know he's a good dude. He didn't mean he didn't mean to do that, and um, hopefully he understood his mistake. So, hey, Davis, just uh, you know, generally, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, you had the the calf, and then I understand you uh, hit your knee last night, right? Yeah, knee is just uh, a little hit. Nothing, nothing special. So they're just hurt like hell at that moment and that was it you know after that was passed and then and calf feeling better yesterday you know had a those 23 minutes it didn't get worse so that's that's a good sign what has this season been like for you um in that regard you know you, you had uh you just had a lot of things that have happened to you the stitches uh obviously these little injuries how frustrating has it been i guess well that, that's part of the job you know it's I wouldn't even say it's frustrating. You just, you know, some seasons you can go through with the, without any of that. Some seasons, you know, you can get banged up a little bit. Everybody's been in that position. So, you know, as part of the job, as I say. Christos. Hello, Davis. How much different will gonna be the approach on tomorrow's game against the Kings? And how much needed is uh, the win on tomorrow's game? In every game, too, the win is needed. But uh, tomorrow's game, uh, I think it just we we, we got to think about ourselves, not about the opponent. We have to uh, get back to the way we were playing a couple weeks ago, and uh, I think that's going to be going forward just the key on both ends of the floor, and uh, and that's going to help us put ourselves Thank in you. the win. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Davis, you know, a lot of you guys have talked about, okay, you guys need to get back to the way you guys were playing defense previously, the communication, the intensity, the resistance. I'm sure it's easier said than done, but why is the consistency not there? You guys have shown that you guys can do it before, but at times haven't been able to execute that. Well, I think uh, partially the, the thing is uh, in the last couple of games, we've gone against uh, top teams in the league and, uh, you know, they have great shooters and, uh, and the thing is that against those teams, sometimes it can damage your confidence, even if you're uh, trying to play the right way. 
then some guy's going to make some tough shots. Then you're going to think about guarding your man more, uh, more than helping others on defense. And, and it just, it just goes that direction, you know, against, against teams like those. Sometimes it's, it's easy to lose track of things that uh, we're trying to do. And, you know, good thing that we all know that, that we got to get back to the way we're playing. Chase. Davis, um, in, in February before you guys, um, you know, made your turnaround, what do you think helped the team stay positive and stay confident before that turnaround? Um, was there anything specific you remember that coach did or players did or, you know, that maybe you guys can pull from uh, this time around? Well, I won't say that uh, we, we've gone that far as, uh, as it was in the beginning of the season. Then, uh, you know, we barely get a couple of wins in two months. Uh, and it, it's not the same thing. And, you know, we've been in a position that we've, we've played good basketball and, uh, and we know we can do it. And uh, it, it, I think the positivity is going to still be there. Uh, we know that we have to play together. And uh, that's, that's basically it.